This segment sponsored by Beyond Van Gogh. I am at the Beyond Van Gogh immersive experience here at the Memorial Coliseum. They are bringing the talent, the history, and the culture of Van Gogh to life throughout this whole exhibit. As you can see, you can walk and actually feel like you are being immersed into his artwork. You get to dive deep and learn about his entire history and what he contributed to art in general. And guess what? I'm taking you on the inside. Let's do it. Joining me now is Fanny Kurta, who is the art historian for the Beyond Van Gogh Immersive Experience. Hi, Fanny. Hi, thank you for having me. Yes, I'm so excited to experience the immersive art gallery that's happening right now. It's been so cool so far. So start off by sharing with us about this Beyond Van Gogh. So Beyond Van Gogh, as you can see, is really about blending cutting edge projection technology along with Vincent's work. Mm -hmm. And that allows us to be part of the paintings, to be inside of them. Mm -hmm. And that's such a unique point of view. There's nothing like it. Yes. There's nothing also like a museum experience. Mm -hmm. Seeing an original Van Gogh is like magic. It's leaping towards you because it's so bright and dynamic. Right. But stepping beyond the frame mm -hmm. and being inside of it, there's nothing quite like it. Exactly. What you all have created is a full 360 experience where people can not only see the artwork, but they literally feel like they're there experiencing the moments on each of the screens. So share about why you all created it to be like this. So this show was created during COVID and it was a hard time for so many reasons. And the idea was to bring something meaningful, a cultural experience that would allow people to be free in the space and just enjoy something that would give them hope. Vincent is known for the darkness in his life. He's known for the ear cutting incident. He's known for struggling with poverty, mental illness issues. And all of these things are true to a certain extent in his life. Right. But most importantly, that's not what you see when you look at his work. It's yeah. filled with color. It's filled with brightness. When you look at an actual Van Gogh of an original painting, if you have a chance to do so, it's already moving, it's already alive. So this show was about breathing a little bit of new life into it. Just bring this new angle, this fresh, fresh outlook on his work. Yes, and as we're looking behind us, these are self-portraits mm -hmm. of him. So you had mentioned there's only one photo of him, mm -hmm. period. And how old was he? He was 19 years old in that 19, photograph. So wow. he's very young. You have this photograph in this exhibit as yes. well, so you get to enjoy that. But it makes these self-portrait all the more meaningful because you have a sense of who he was and knowing that he painted over the last 10 years of his life. Yes. This covers a short decade of his life and yet they're all widely different. It goes to show that he's not painting what he sees, he's painting what he perceives. And I feel like right. that's why we connect with him. It's that something is. more than yeah. what you see. Because we see him through his own eyes because mm -hmm. this is his own representation of himself which mm -hmm. is so incredible. And so throughout this journey of the immersive experience, it starts from the scratch, right? It starts from the very first moments of his life and his original pieces. So kind of just tell me, where do we start and where do we go? So with an artist like Van Gogh, it's very easy to be chronological because he only painted the last 10 years of his life and it changed us massively according to where he is. And so you do start in the Netherlands where it's much darker tones and he's learning how to paint. It's already widely different than the art that's being made in his era, yeah. but it's not yet the Van Gogh you think of when you think of him. Mm -hmm. And then it gets to Paris and there's something that happens. The mm -hmm. light of the Impressionist changes his life. Mm -hmm. And then you get to Arles, and Arles is pure, pure color. It's mm -hmm. most of the pieces we know and love are from that period. Right. And then Saint-Rémy de Provence also, mm -hmm. where he gets into the asylum, and then Auvers sur Oise, where he ends up his life, and it's pure, pure movement. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic way of seeing how his style evolved and how an artist that's so widely recognizable. If you, even if you don't know much about art history, chances are you can identify a Van Gogh. Mm -hmm. And that's a unique thing. Mm -hmm. And you get to see it evolve in front of you. Wow, and he has contributed so much to modern art mm -hmm. and him being so historic and so legendary. And so as an art historian, how do you feel that his past pieces have influenced current artwork and current artists? It's an excellent question because there's so much to say about the freedom of that period. The Impressionists before him and him, he's considered post-Impressionist. There's something about this whole era where they're going against 
everything that's being made at the moment. He's going against the idea that art is an ideal that's unattainable and they're looking at day-to-day -day life and deeming that worthy of being works of art. And that's something that is incredibly important. We're used now to sharing our day-to-day -day experiences right. online. We're used to our own subjective point of view. That was not the case when he was around. Sharing your own vision of the world was something that was yet coming to be. And yeah. that's a massive difference and a massive shift. And we owe a lot to him. So Fanny, it is so cool to see the room move, right? Mm -hmm. And it does feel like you're in the painting, not just looking at it. So share with me about the piece that's up right now. So now we have a combination of multiple pieces that are from the end of his life. We are in auvers sur -Oise, and that's the last place he'll live in. And mm. you can feel the intensity of it. When it's blown up like this around you, you feel that it's not thin layers over thin layers. There's mm -hmm. an intensity to it. There's yes. a frantic pace to it. And you can feel that we're slowly building now towards the last painting he ever did. Oh, it's wow. called Tree Roots. And when you look at it, it's almost pure abstraction. It's like wow. almost at the end of his life, he didn't even need motif. It was all mm -hmm. about color. It was all about intensity. Yes. And there's a lot of that. And you feel it so much when you're walking through it. Yes. And just looking at it a bit closer, we can just take a step back. Mm -hmm. I feel that since you all have um, expanded the brush strokes, mm -hmm. we're just able to feel such a connection because look how large they are. Exactly. This and is you get so to cool. see what I like the most is that you see that he's not blending colors. He's put them, yes. them side by side. You see also the intensity of it, the texture, we call it impasto, mm -hmm. just the sheer quantity of paint that there is. And you feel this energy, you feel the intensity of it. Yes. And that's a great way of looking at artwork as well. When you look into the detail, nitty gritty of it, mm -hmm. you appreciate it on a whole different level. Yes, I agree. in the start, right, of the whole exhibit, the room that really tells his story. So share with me about this experience. So this is the entry point. This is an opportunity for people to learn more about him, see mm -hmm. that there's much more to him than the ear cutting incident. Yes. There's a complexity <laughs> to him, and it's an opportunity to read his own words, which is such a treasure trove of information. You get mm -hmm. to see that there's a philosophical depth to him. There's mm -hmm. also like a childlike wonder. Yes. There's so many layers, and he feels so fresh and so relevant. Oh, I love that. So Fanny, can you share with me some of the most interesting moments or dynamic moments a part of Van Gogh's life? There's so many, there's so many things that happened to him. One of the most important moments was of course when he went to Paris and discovered the Impressionist. Mm -hmm. Something happened in his mind and color exploded. Mm -hmm. But before that, before he got to painting, we have to know that he got to it late in his life. He tried to be an art dealer first and failed. He tried to be a preacher like his father and that failed also. So he got to painting and really embraced it, embraced it late. Mm -hmm. But when he got to it, he really, dove right in and there's mm -hmm. such an intense rhythm of production it's almost frantic the way he painted right. and this all goes back to also that core moment of the impressionist where lights entering his brain mm -hmm. and you talk about that him being late in life so of course he passed when he was 37 mm -hmm. and so he kind of um, the timeline of course back then in the 1800s are a lot different mm -hmm. so he was in his 20s discovered this art went forward and did it until his last day mm -hmm. yes because it was something that really accompanied him mm -hmm. so he obviously ended his own life and before that he was struggling we all know the struggles in his life mm -hmm. but what is important to remember is that there was a lot of light also in it there was yeah. a lot of joy there was a lot of appreciation yeah. and that's really at the core of what he wanted to share mm -hmm. and we know that because of these letters because of his correspondence with his brother yes. he was thinking of future generation of mm -hmm. giving them the solutions that were helping him out mm -hmm. throughout everything that was that he was battling yeah. and everybody can relate to battling your own demons is yes. something that's still very true for the 19th century and 21st mm -hmm. century and that makes his work incredibly strong powerful and fresh it's about the healing power of nature it's mm -hmm. about the power of color the power of light it's about the therapeutic qualities of art and all of these things mm -hmm. are true today 
I love that. I love that. I love the connectivity. The connectivity of art to our contemporary moments mm -hmm. is what it all is. Okay, let's keep looking. <laughs> So now, Fanny, this whole exhibit really culminates to the end of his journey. Mm -hmm. And through this last frame, there's something special here that you wanted to share. Please share with me. Because throughout this room, like we were saying, there's quotes of him, there are his own words. And that's really the biggest like, advantage of his work, yeah. all of this knowledge that we have from him. Mm -hmm. And in this quote, you can see that he's telling us that he admires all of the talent of Delacroix and Millet, both painters that he truly, truly loved and I inspired his work. And yet when he looks at their genius, he says that he has to remind himself that yes, he is somebody and he can do something. And it's just a great example of somebody who's now a global icon, somebody mm -hmm. who's widely known across the world. Even if you don't know a lot about art history, you can pinpoint a Van Gogh. Right. And yet he was battling self-doubt. Mm -hmm. like all of us and that's just also so inspiring he was confident in his genius confident that what he did was true and purposeful and he mm -hmm. felt it believed it but yeah. there was still doubt he was still fighting his own demon yeah and we can all relate to that absolutely the insecurity of just going for something that you're passionate about not knowing how it will um, the outcome will be mm -hmm. and how incredible now so many years later centuries later we're celebrating him in this moment and he had no idea he truly happen. did not know. <laughs> I get this question a lot of what would he think if he were to come back. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to say because he wanted to reach as many people as possible. And yet when he was starting to have success in his life, there was a beautiful article written about him calling him an alchemist of light, a genius of color. Mm -hmm. And yet he writes to his brother saying, I have to reach out to him, tell him it's not me. I, I need to patch things <laughs> up. He was not assessing what he would become the mm -hmm. legend he would become yes. and so it's a good lesson for all of us we need it to plow is. through we need to be confident something when it's truly felt might be worth it absolutely and taking risks thank you so much fanny for taking me on this tour and really sharing your in-depth knowledge thank you my pleasure I appreciate it and as you all can see the beyond van gogh immersive experience is so cool and something for the entire family to get a piece of history and learn more about his journey if you would like more information we'll have their website listed below this exhibit is taking place through august 10th here at the memorial coliseum we'll be right back this segment sponsored by Beyond Van Gogh.